very good morning students uh, today we are going to do uh, the first uh, uh, topic that is of english literature we are going to do chapter number 6 sir lolly's ghost now uh, this chapter is very interesting children you all are going to enjoy it uh, the name itself is quite interesting what do you understand out of it the name signifies that yes we have a character in the story and the character is sir lolly and he is a ghost so everyone has different perceptions about ghosts and spirits similarly uh, in this chapter also there are different characters who have different perspective about ghosts and let's see how the story unfolds before we read the story we have a starter activity children on page number 81 okay so in this starter activity uh, they have mentioned about halloween now children halloween is a celebration across the globe wherein people celebrate uh celebrate by decking up uh, like ghosts and spirits and uh, using different attires uh, different uh, you know uh, accessories sometimes vegetables uh, to you know kind of have a very scary uh, appearance so uh, what is your activity children in this uh, halloween concept is going to be you are going to draw a picture of halloween and how you are going to utilize a vegetable in making a halloween mask for yourself okay so you like you know children sometimes uh, you know the concept of halloween is signified with the help of a pumpkin right so you are going to choose any vegetable draw it uh, at the beginning of this chapter in your notebook and uh, demonstrate which vegetable you'll be choosing for uh, you know making your halloween mask okay now children we'll start the chapter there is a little introduction to our chapter which we will be doing okay let's go through it lolly's boarding school had two types of residents boys and girls the 200 year old school had all the features that made it an absolute paradise for girls the huge sunlight blotting trees the lengthy the length of gloomy corridors lit only by the cobweb filtered light that struggled in through the high ventilators offered endless opportunities for the favorite pastime of cows scaring humans okay so over here they are telling this is a very old residential school children residential school means children used to reside in that school stay in that school and they are saying the other uh, the other residents of the school were the ghosts why because it was a perfect paradise for them because they liked the way the appearance itself was so scary and welcoming for the ghosts the that you you know they would enjoy the activity of scaring human beings how because of the lengthy corridors and high ceilings ventilators having cobwebs and huge trees blotting uh, sunlight so all these ideas made it a very haunted place and what made this place even more fun for the ghost was that 750 boys in the boarding were available and willing to be frightened at any time of the day or night but newcomer arjun scornfully declared that he did not believe in ghosts this shocked the boys and what was worse was arjun mocked the idea of the ghost of sir lolly okay now people in that school uh, especially the 750 boys uh, you know uh, kind of agreed believed and absorbed the concept of ghost especially the ghost of sir lolly and they were ready to be scared at any point of the day now this new boy kind of you know was against this concept or idea of belief of ghost and uh, that was a kind of a revolutionary idea which came up from this new boy and others were not ready to uh, ready to accept they found it disrespectful to sir lolly's ghost and they did not like the idea when arjun called the legend the funniest story he had ever heard the boys planned to teach the newcomer a lesson how could anyone dare laugh at the chief ghost you know uh, so over here they are getting very offended they are like the idea which has haunted us for such a long time it's just taking it in a joke so they believe that uh, you know such a thing does not uh, you know cannot be forgiven he needs to be taught a lesson so all the boys thought that arjun needs to learn a lesson 
Uh, now, the, what was this legend, legendary story revolving around in the school? The legendary story that was revolving around the school was Sir Lolly used to roam around the school with a blood-stained pillow. Now, some activity was planned to scare Arjun and realize uh, and give respect to the ghost of Sir Lolly. The boys planned an activity. Okay, let's see what the story is about. The plan when it was worked out in detail was something anyone could be proud about. So the boys have made a plan. Rohan had decided to use his own pillow and managed to get hold of a long handled broom. The kind used to clean cobwebs. Since the school had been built in late 19th century, the extra high ceilings required a Required brooms with impossibly long handles to claim them. Okay, so it was a plan and it was conceived by these group of boys and uh, they must be having the same dormitory, same room and they decided they are going to teach Arjun a lesson. How they going to use a pillow. So Rohan came up with the idea so he decided he'll use his own pillow and they are going to attach it to a long stick. The only stick that they could very evidently find was the broomstick. The huge ceilings, you remember children? So huge ceilings and the cobwebs could only be cleansed with the help of these huge sticks of these brooms. So he decided he use one of them. Okay, because they were used in cleaning the cobwebs and were just the right thing to be used. In order to make the broom invisible in the dark, he smeared the bamboo handle with damp mud. When no one was around, he practiced how the pillow, supposed to belong to the ghost, would appear to float in the dormitory by being attached to the broom's stick. So if you see children, it was a foolproof plan. It was a plan made in order to make someone realize and get scared. Right? So this, uh, the stick was, uh, you know, kind of smeared. Uh, the, uh, the mud was kind of, you know, put all around the stick, bamboo stick, so that it didn't appear or it uh, was invisible in the dormitory when the pillow was attached to it. Okay? And he kept practicing. Rohan kept practicing uh, the way he's going to get the pillow out and the way he's going to scare Arjun. And all this was done in advance as a part of the plan. He was delighted when he saw how the terrifying effect the terrifying the effect was. The final touch was to instruct the other boys in the dorm how to behave on the night when the ghostly pillow made its traumatic entry into the dormitory. On the night of the ghostly visit, it took the excited boys a long time to fall asleep. But Rohan himself was so tired by that morning's grueling practice session for their school marathon that he slept right through the faint digital beeping of his alarm clock. So if you see children, Rohan had had, uh, has had a very hectic day. He, has, uh, he did practice for the school marathon. After that, he practiced of how to uh, you know, bring about the plan of uh, uh, scaring Arjun. That he was really, really tired. And these sessions had put him to sleep even when the alarm clock was beeping. He had put the alarm clock and timed it in such a way that he could get up and put his plan to action. But that couldn't happen okay and prior to this he made sure that he told everyone in his plan all the boys were collected and informed that you know when the traumatic scene would take place you'll have to react naturally you'll have to get scared you'll have to yell scream and show a very scary look on your face so that was a part of the plan to give it a more uh, dramatic effect and uh, uh, so that others realize it and uh, you know get uh, get the concept absorbed in them even more effectively when he finally woke with a start he realized that he had overslept he shone the torch at his alarm clock 
It was already three in the morning. But it was still dark and daybreak. In the Nilgiris was several hours away. He felt under his bed. Yes, the pillow he had prepared was right there. Not too late for the ghost to make its appearance, he decided, and was about to tiptoe out of the bed. So over here, you children, you see that, uh, you know, yes, Rohan was quite tired. He had overslept. But then when he got up, he was all excited to put his plan to action. He checked whether his tools, his, uh, you know, the, uh, the weapon, that is his broomstick, smeared with mud, along with the attached blood-stained pillow. Is it there? Yes, it was there. Then he saw, okay, it's 3 o'clock. But then in the Nilgiris, where this hostel was located, the daybreak was far off. So we still had time to make the dramatic entry of the ghost. So he decided that he would now play the prank and, you know, was about to get off his bed when suddenly he was surprised, he was startled. When a familiar grating sound warned him that the dormitory door was being opened. It was unlike their housemaster to pay such a late visit in the dorm, to the dorm. Who did the soft footsteps belong to then? When he discovered the reason for the footstep, icy prickles of fear crept down his spine. For advancing slowly into the dormitory was a blood-stained pillow. So children, this indeed is quite scary. If any one of us has to witness and we are not part of the plan, then definitely it's going to be scary. And over here, the person was who's got scared is Rohan, who was actually the initiator of the plan. But since this plan was not his, his tools are still under his bed. So this event is actually scaring him. I see prickles, uh, you know, ran down his spine means he got really, really scared. And the reason being that just when he was going to put his plan to action, he observed something that he didn't expect. He, ex uh, he, uh, he was, uh, you know, uh, quite sure about someone walking in, but he didn't know that it's going to be the very own ghost that he was just going to pretend. It's going to be Sir Lolly's ghost with the, you know, the blood-stained pillow and the hands without any figure. So it was just the hands holding the pillow advancing to the door in the into the dormitory holding it was a hideous pair of ghostly white hands made more terrifying by the fact that they weren't attached to any figure rohan's blood turned cold he fumbled under his bed again wondering whether any of the boys had decided to start the trick without him no, the pillow had not, he had prepared, was still there. Which meant that he was, was he, no, it wasn't possible. But there it was. A pillow actually floating forward into the room, held by a bloodless pair of severed hands. Okay, so severed hands means cut, chopped off hands. They were just hands, they were not attached to a body. And they looked very, very scary, very terrifying. Uh, Rohan just went under his bed. He made sure whether some other boy must have taken up the task of, uh, you know, uh, uh, initiating the plan. But no, the pillow was still there, the broomstick was still there. And then he was in a dilemma. Who is this thing? Who is this? Uh, uh, is it a spirit? Is it Sir Lolly? He was not quite sure. It is impossible that he could see a ghost. But then there is no other option. This could be the only possible thing that could have, you know, happened. It is the ghost itself. Was it actually a ghost? He wondered, his heart thudding wildly and blood pounding in his ears. Ghost, his throat was so dry with fear that his voice emerged only as a feeble whisper. There's a ghost. He tried again and this time a few sleepy heads stirred awake. Seeing the bloody pillow, the boy simply assumed the Rohan, that Rohan's plan was working. Some of them even giggled before following the instruction they had been given. 
So over here, children, you see that finally accepting the fact that he has witnessed, uh, you know, uh, no one else but Sir Lawless Ghost. The only thing that came out of his dry throat was Sir Lawless Ghost, Ghost. And his voice kind of woke up the kids around and they had a giggle. They started laughing. Now they laughed before actually showing that they are scared because they thought that Rohan's plan is now into action. They did not notice that Rohan was just beside them. They thought that the plan was in action. And out of all their excitement about the plan, they were giggling and then finally, you know, kind of being, uh, uh, you know, uh, dramatizing uh, their role that, of being scared and pretending to be very terrified so they did not realize that who was just behind beside that is Rohan they began screaming and shrieking pretending to be afraid there was so much confusion that no one noticed that Rohan himself was sitting stiffly in his bed Instead of being outside the dormitory, steering the pillow with the long broomstick. The screams continued for a long time, even after the pillow had retreated from the dormitory. So over the boys were having such fun. So over here, children, you see that this whole incident, uh, which was supposedly to be a plan, but came out to be a shock for Rohan, was quite fun for the other boys. They really enjoyed it. And the best thing about this incident was that the boys really kept thinking throughout the entire time over there that this was the plan that's actually working out. They did, And they kept screaming, yelling, doing their part, even when the pillow retreated away because they did not realize that this was indeed a shocking incident. And the only person who was very, very scared was Rohan. That it was some time before they remembered the target of the trick and turned their attention to Arjun. To their satisfaction, they saw that his eyes had turned saucer-shaped with horror. As for Rohan, the boys were filled with admiration at what they assumed was a superb acting. Even for even the hair in his eyebrows was standing on end in terror, making his bushy brows look like two hairy caterpillars on his forehead. And though he kept rubbing his arms, the goosebumps on them didn't subside till the next day. So over here, children, the plan had a target, the plan had an initiator and the plan had everyone's role in it, okay? So if you see, the boys turned their attention towards the target and they were so satisfied that finally Arjun believes in ghosts. How do they realize that? Through the look on his face, he had these big saucer-shaped eyes which showed that terror in his eyes. And on the contrary, they saw, saw fear on the face of Rohan also. But that gave them admiration. They started having more respect and pride and uh, they admired the way Rohan, after initiating the full thing, you know, uh, is still pretending to be scared. And they really, really loved that look on his face. And uh, Rohan, though he wanted to, you know, uh, you know, keep control of his emotions, a uh, fear was just all over him. Uh, if, uh, if they checked his eyebrows, the goosebumps all over his arms, everything showed that he was dead scared. While the metal braces on his teeth had actually come loose. Because his teeth had been chattering all night. How were they to know that their prefect wasn't acting and that his fright was totally genuine? Poor Rohan. He was haunted by the memory of the dreadful vision he had seen. How ghastly the blood stains had been. And that spooky pair of hands he shivered at the thought. Enough to have turned his hair white. He checked the mirror hastily, recalling the story he had made up for Arjun's benefit. His hair was still black, he noted with relief. You know, you see uh, the plight of Rohan 
way here, he can't stop thinking about his plan. He can't stop thinking about the entire incident. The plan which was actually supposed to be a memorable and, uh, you know, lifelong, uh, uh, you know, memory for someone became uh, a part of his life. Because he didn't intend to, the target was actually Arjun. So over here, if you see, uh, his braces becoming loose, the goosebumps all over his arms, everything was signifying that, you know, he was really scared. He couldn't stop thinking about the children. He went to the mirror to check actually whether his hair had turned white or not because he was constantly thinking over it. He was getting so scared. Though the fingers that noted the special Thai prefix war trembled noticeably. The next few days were among the worst in Rohan's life. He was easily startled and even the familiar sound of the junior boys stampeding, stampeding down the wooden or the breakfast going ringing, gong ringing made him jump up in terror. His heart wasn't in anything. He looked tired and forlorn as he went to fetch a fresh sports t-shirt from the kit room. So over here children you see that Rohan's days had become very gloomy, very sad, full of fright. And if you see even when he was sitting uh, in a normal classroom with everyone around him, even uh, the boys running across the corridors gave him fright. Anything startled him, anything surprised him, anything scared him. Why? Because he now is into the concept that yes, he is the only one who is actually seeing the ghost. Everyone else thinks the, uh, it to be an act of the prefect. He couldn't tie his uh, tie prayer per perfectly because why? Because he was so, his hands were still shivering. He couldn't get over the idea that he has actually seen a ghost. His days were going really bad. He decided to get a fresh sports t-shirt from the kit room. Where all the wash uniforms were stored in rows of neatly numbered cubicles. Now these are cabinets. This was the matron's domain and she was busy scolding the school dhobi for not washing the clothes properly. This white shirt looks bluish grey. There are muddy streaks on these sheets. And this pillowcase has huge red stain on it. The matron was complaining. What can I do, madam? The dhobi defended his washing. That pillowcase had huge patches of red ink on it. You know how difficult it is to wash off red ink. So children, I have managed to get most of the ink off. So children, over here you see that Rohan happened to come to the kit room which was actually the place for the matron. He wanted a fresh sports station. Uh, he coincidentally came during that time when there was this conversation between the matron. Matron is basically the caretaker of the children in the re uh, residential school and the school dhobi. So there was a conversation between them, an interaction where uh, she was complaining about these, uh, uh, you know, these uh, uh, clothes being washed by the dhobi uh, not properly. So she uh, showed him some uh, bed sheets which were dirty, dusty and she showed him this pillow which had this red stain. And the uh, dhobi defended himself by saying that it's very difficult to remove the stain and it had been there when it was given to him. So he didn't actually do it. It is one of the kids. Red ink on a pillowcase? Rohan froze. Was this the pillowcase that had been blooded with red ink to become the ghostly pillow? Every student at Lawley's was expected to mark his name on all items of clothing. So it wouldn't be difficult to trace the pillowcase's owner. Matron seemed to have the same idea, for she snatched the pillowcase from the dhobi and examined it. Arjun Krishnaswamy, she exclaimed, exclaimed angrily, seeing the new boy's name marked on the pillowcase, the boy is getting worse and worse. Just the other day, there was a complaint that he had taken a pair of white gloves from the band room. So if you see children, Rohan has actually come at the right place at the right time and he has got the clue about the entire incident now. It was Arjun, the new boy, who had actually used his own pillowcase 
to pretend this entire act so that you know the people who are going to teach him a lesson he can teach them a lesson and his plan actually worked and Rohan's you can understand Rohan's flight over here he must have been so angry he must have been so disappointed that he actually gave into the thoughts of uh, you know uh, having a ghost you know having encountered a ghost and the matron is uh, obviously quite angry because Arjun had even taken white gloves from the band room which was not supposed to be taken. The kind the drummers use and stuffed it with clay the sculpture in from the sculpture room. The clay had dried in the gloves to make them look like a pair of white hands. What's the matter Rohan? she asked, suddenly noticing the prefect standing there. Absolute still and pale faced, you look like you've seen a ghost. The matron and the dhobi crossed themselves at very mention of the word. Seen a ghost? Rohan repeated numbly. While all sorts of angry thoughts went through his mind about what he'd like to do to that brat, that cheeky rascal, that pest, that pesky newcomer. Then he shook his head and grinned ruefully. Seen a ghost? Oh, no ma'am. Now I'm quite certain that I haven't. Seen a ghost? I mean now that is... And he burst out laughing. His laughter was such a loud mixture of repeal, relief and hysteria that the matron and Dhobi looked at one another puzzled and then crossed themselves again. So over your children, you'll see this the last encounter, this last uh, episode of the chapter wherein they are saying that uh, the matron, uh, you know, kind of questioned Rohan about uh, being there in the kit room and he said, uh, you know, probably uh, he, uh, he didn't have anything to speak so he looked very pale faced. So the matron exclaimed that, okay, have you seen a ghost, the kind of expressions that you're giving? So he, uh, l uh, listening to that dialogue, he got lost into that entire episode of Sir Lolly's ghost and what happened with him in these past few days and he, uh, angry thoughts rushed through him. He was so angry uh, that he started having these uh, really violent thoughts about Arjun that he's uh, really uh, bad and he's uh, mischievous and he's so notorious and so terrible that he needs to teach him a lesson and with all those ideas when he was questioned, uh, if you see uh, while he was being questioned the matron and the dhobi made the sign of the cross uh, signifying that you know uh, probably God save us so they are kind of remembering God when they are talking about ghost because uh, they seem to be quite uh, pious religious people who you know want to uh, uh, take the name of God along with if they are mentioning about some spirit or ghost okay so uh, when they were doing that then Rohan actually uh, got it at a came to a point children where he was no longer talking about the ghost uh, where he was no longer talking about Arjun he was talking about the relief which he achieved and because of the relief which he got children he started laughing so they were thinking just now he was pale faced now he's laughing there's something is something wrong with him and then they made the sign of the cross again so that was the chapter children and it uh, turned out to be a very interesting event children uh, I will be uh, sharing with you all the question answers of this chapter along with the vocabulary exercise of this chapter. I want you all to go through the question answers yourself and then you all can write it down from the PDF. Thank you children. Have a nice day.